If you can get a mention of swinging into every show, you'd be happy, <laughs> wouldn't you? This week we're in the northwest and we're feeling a little bit frisky. I don't even want to know how you're going to persuade him. I don't think there's going to be much talking. <laughs> and in the battle of the sexes. I don't know whether to call it a stumbling block, but there's, there's, of course a, but... there's a stumbling block. Girls will be girls. Where would I put all my claws? And boys will be boys. I have got a whopper and I will be revealing it tomorrow morning in what promises to be a search of titanic proportions. You won't <laughs> fall in. There we go. No, you're flying. <laughs> I can't, you can see New York. <laughs> this week, we're in the Northwest, pulling out all the stops for two pairs of hopeful house hunters. But with babies, bumps and balmy budgets, I'm sorely tempted to bum a lift back down south. Don't sail off into the sunset yet, Kirsty. With its stunning new skyline, stylish shops and super social culture, there's plenty to keep you interested in Greater Manchester. Though in recent months, demand for luxury living in the city centre has fallen. Further out, the family house market is still full of life. And that's where we're searching this week, with two couples desperate to find dream homes. Since they moved to Manchester three years ago, Helen and Rick really have been living the high life. With a swanky rental pad in the heart of the city centre, they've had clubs, restaurants and shops on their doorstep. But times they are a-changing. There's a baby on the way. And while the penthouse may be perfect for partying, it's no good for parenthood. We will miss um, living in the city centre. We'll really miss this flat. But then at the same time, you know, we've sort of done that lifestyle for 20 years. So, you know, it's, it's time to sort of move on now and, and do something different. Fortunately, all their friends are moving on too. Problem is, they've already found their family homes in the suburbs and with only three months to go till Bump becomes baby, H and Rick are playing catch-up. But at least they know exactly where they want to move to, the swanky footballers' playground of Hale and Altringham. The ideal area would be on the border because then we've got the best of both towns and villages. It's about a four-square-mile area. Blimey. That's only around 200 streets, and it's a very sought-after area with not much coming on the market. Maybe the garden could be a little bit smaller or yeah. maybe not quite, you know, the perfect angle. Um, what else would you compromise on? <laughs> <laughs> OK, wouldn't compromise on much else. <laughs> well, it's a long way down from the penthouse. So where are we looking? I think the main areas we're sort of looking is around Altrincham and Hale area. So then that gives us, we can get the metro into Manchester for me getting to work. And also then it's, it's good for schools, it's good for the, that bar, cafe sort of lifestyle that we want to enjoy in evenings and weekends. But I, I like the way you, you start that sentence with the main areas. Yes. <laughs> and, and then you go there. <laughs> I feel slightly confined by that. And that's not the only hitch. H and Rick have got a maximum budget of £460,000, but ideally they're looking to spend only £400,000. For that, they want four bedrooms, off-street parking and a south or southwest facing garden. Problem is, even though the average house price here has dropped by more than 18% in the past year, H and Rick's budget still won't go as far as they might think. think you've got it tough, spare a thought for our second set of house hunters, Graham and Nina Walker. Looking to start a family, they were minutes from signing on the dotted line for their first marital home when Northern Rock crashed way back in 2007. You know, all the newspapers were saying that, the, you know, this was the start of the housing crash. We lost money, you know, we, we paid money to do for the solicitor's fees. Yeah. Um, we had a really difficult decision, but we decided then that we were going to pull out of the house. They've been biding their time in a budget rental in Preston and have managed to save a whopping £35,000. But it's been 18 months and Nina is desperate to move on. I am so fed up of living here, you know. We want a home that we can live in and that we can have children in and that we can start our married life together in. 
For 31-year-old Nina, who's previously owned a property, it's about making a fast move. But for 27-year-old first-time buyer Graham, it's about making the right move. It's really important to me that we find the right house, and I think that makes makes me a bit more sort of cautious, really. I think, but that I frustrates think, me. Yeah, because, because I think Nina thinks with her heart, and I think with my head. Um, but I mean, there's there's downsides to to both, really. You're telling me, between Nina's dreamy ideals and Graham's first-time fear, the only place this pair are moving is nowhere fast. So you almost mm -hmm. bought nearly two years ago. Mm -hmm. You didn't, yeah. which was totally the right decision, as it turns out, because yeah. prices have come down since then. Mm -hmm. How many houses did you look at? Um, we must have looked at, I would say, sort of 30, 40 houses. Yeah, in, yeah we probably uh, did. The, yeah. When we first started looking. Wow. Um, mm -hmm. That's that's a lot. Is mm -hmm. that a lot? Yeah. That's a lot. I think Graham's a more is more a he, more hesitant buyer, whereas I'm I just want a home, you know, and yeah. I'm de and I know you do as well, Graham. But yeah, I but think I, I think I'm more cautious because I just want to make sure that we yeah. do buy the right thing. Yeah. Okay, I can see I've got some hand holding ahead of me. Ideally, Graham and Nina want something with character and period features. Plus, a good-sized garden and three bedrooms, all for £190,000. And because of Graham's job, we're looking at somewhere within half an hour of Preston and Manchester. So we've got £400,000 to get H and Rick into the footballer belt. And £190,000 to get Graham and Nina back in the game. Time for Phil and I to be united in Manchester City. Actually, it's going to be quite a tough task. Well, we've got some serious work to do, but I'm feeling pretty happy about my things. That said, yeah, they have got... Yeah, of course you're got... feeling happy. You're going to be in Wagland. It's going to be all four-by-fours and fake tans where you're going. They've got very, 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 very focused proof, though. Well, you're their man, then, because you can't focus on more than one thing at once. <laughs> With direct rail links to Manchester, good schools, shops, bars and restaurants, it's no surprise H and Rick love Hale and Altrincham. Problem is, they're not the only ones, and prices here can be more than twice the regional average. And with few new properties on the agent's books, it's anything but a buyer's market. So something's got to give to get H and Rick the family home they need for £400,000 and its location. My first house is on the very outer edge of their preferred patch, 20 minutes walk from the bars and restaurants they love. But it's within budget and it has all the space they need. Come on in. Uh, now, we're fairly, it's a fairly standard house at the front. So yeah, that's in. bigger than normal. Yeah. I, I think it's from here on that it actually gets a really exciting house because it becomes different and we start to get the feel of the openness, it's light, it's contemporary, it's great space. Yeah. Yes, it, it goes on yeah. <laughs> quite a bit more. It's this nice, yeah, just... it's really nice. I like it. I love... Um, one of the things that was on my list was um, a kitchen with a glass roof. So um, that's less building <laughs> work. Good yeah. start, <laughs> isn't it? Look yeah. at that. Upstairs, there are the four bedrooms H and Rick asked for, and I think there's potential to add even more space by converting the garage or bringing the extension flush with the rest of the house. It's not a massive guest bedroom, but it has an ensuite. It's quite a decent one. It's, it's big enough, as you said, it's yeah, guests. Yeah, They're on guess. here once in a while, so you don't want to waste lots of room on an empty room. Oh, on guests. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> yes. Grannies might become quite useful when, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when somebody arrives. Exactly, yes. And something else that might become useful... Oh, <laughs> is your nursery. Oh, perfect. It's lovely, I really like it, it's nice. Well, I think I've got this one sewn up. How'd you get on? Yeah, good, good. Yeah, we really like it's it. A few smiles around. Yeah, yeah. I could definitely, definitely see myself living here. Um, the only thing that we're a little bit about is is where it is, because um, it is quite away from sort of both Hale and Altringham. Yeah. So I think what we want to do is is do the drive or do the walk and just see. Fine. Well, that all went very well indeed. I'm just texting Lady Allsop, making sure she knows I'm in front. H&R, adore my first house. Good luck in Preston. Loser. <laughs> oh, I could have sworn I heard them say it was too far out of town. Do I really need to remind you of three little words?
We're in the northwest where time is running out for parents to be Helen and Rick. They need a family home before two becomes three. And I'm with Nina and Graham, who have rejected over 40 properties in their hunt for their marital home. Now it's down to me to get them over the threshold. In these uncertain times, buying the right house is a tricky operation, particularly when many would-be sellers are deciding to stay home, pull the shutters and ride out the storm. But for Nina and Graham Walker, the storm has gone on too long. Since their wedding 14 months ago, they've been renting a small place in Preston and they're sick of putting dreams of family life on hold. So our first house has family written all over it. A large garden, three good-sized bedrooms, ample living and dining space, plus good schools within walking distance. Granted, it doesn't have the period features I know Nina would prefer, but it's practical, spacious, and at just short of £175,000, it's £15,000 under budget. Now, note the door, guys, because it's one of the few original features in the house. Oh, right. right. OK. OK. Oh. Oh, interesting. Mm. I'm, like, sort of pleasantly surprised, really. I, I wasn't... I wasn't... Yeah? Yeah. I think I can see this sort of potential with it. Interesting. <laughs> so, Graham's first impression was, was it's slightly pleasantly surprised, but mm. Nina? I don't think it's possibly got enough period features and I'm, I don't like either of the fireplaces. No. I kind of, that is not... That, That's that horrible. Would be, that would be right in like, um, like a barn or something. Blimey. Graham looks positive, but something tells me if Nina's not happy, it'll be a no-go. I always say that if someone's really interested in a house, mm -hmm. they'll be itching to know what the price is, and you mm. haven't asked me. No. What is the price? 174,950. Okay. Okay. What do you think? Um careful Graham, I think there's a right answer. Yeah, I think it's quite small. It feels small in here. Yeah. It feels like where where would I put all my clothes? Oh, I don't know, Nina. Where would you put all your clothes? Can you see yourselves living in this house? I'm not sure. Does that mean, yeah. no, I don't think I can? It means, let's see the other properties. <laughs> 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 well, clearly this house isn't a contender. I'm starting to think this search might be less about twisting Graham's arm and more about finding Nina period charm. And while they poodle home to ponder on things, I'm off down the M60 do to pop in on Pip. And I could do with some support. Helen and Rick are expecting their first baby in just three months and need a family home fast. Problem is, they've got their hearts set on central Altrincham and Hale, which gives me approximately four square miles of search area and not many properties to play with. But I think I've got one which might just do the trick. Central Hale is kind of where you want it to be, isn't it? And, and yeah. perfectly obvious why. Yeah. 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 Shops. Yeah, Restaurants, cafe. bars, cafes, it's all going on here, isn't it? Yeah, this is where we want to be. We want to be able to, to get in there and enjoy this sort of lifestyle as yeah. well. Well, I'm hoping that Kirsty is here somewhere. Here she is! <laughs> Shopping, <laughs> of course! <laughs> isn't that I would point? never have believed that Kirsty in a baby Very shop. No, the whole point of being in this area is the nice shops. Hello, it's very nice Hi. to meet you. Great first Hi. 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 That probably bag tells the story, doesn't it? Very yeah. popular with young families. Easy yeah. to see why. Yeah. And the house that we're going to see really? is up this street here. Oh, it's close. Right. Oh, oh, right. Right. So right. you really are push yeah. the cram yeah. and you're into it. I think most of us realise that in order to get the right location, you often have to compromise on size. But I think H and Rick need to see it to believe it. This house does have everything they asked for. But 20 minutes closer to town than the last house, everything here is on a smaller scale. Except, of course, the price tag. £30,000 more than their ideal spend. Come in and see what you make of this. It's a little bit smaller than where we've come from. It's a little bit narrower. Um, and I wouldn't describe it as a project, but there's, a, there's plenty of stuff that you're going to want to do to liven it up, brighten it up. Mm -hmm. OK. Um, <laughs> no, from first impressions from myself, I came, came in here, it was very dark, it's 
hasn't got that room air, it's narrow. I'll still look at the rest of it, but it's a big no without, unless it came in at such a ridiculously cheap price that you'd have to it doesn't. buy, buy. <laughs> 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 it's fine. But, uh, I think it still needs a lot of money spending on it as well for... It's for horrible. What, for what we want. Just, it's it's, it's not horrible, artistic. it's just horrible. <laughs> I don't know when, what else to say. I, I feel that you could create something that would suit you here. It would cost a lot of money, it would mm. take time and effort, which you may decide that, that you don't have. Yeah, I, Phil, I, it's already been decided. You're <laughs> flogging a dead I, horse. I, I know, I am going to slightly flog the dead horse because, and the reason for, for, for doing that is because this is the housing stock of the area. This is what you get yeah. 200 yards from Hale High Street. Well, I think. What this has then delivered to us is yeah. we'll live a bit further from Hale and Altingham than what we said before to get the house that we want. OK. And dare I even ask about this house? I think it's a no. <laughs> I think it's a no. It's safe to say. <laughs> right, well, thank God they like the first place. I could do with a drink. Congratulations, that was an unmitigated disaster on a scale that I haven't seen for a couple of years. Oh, not at all. It was all part of the plan. They right. will come out tomorrow morning realising that they cannot live right where they wanted to do. So um, that was a plan, was it? Yeah. <laughs> yes. That was a plan. It was a plan. If that's a well considered plan, plan, I'd hate to see what impromptu looks like. <laughs> and unless you can pull a whopper out of the bag, I've, I've got a whopper. Disaster. I have got a whopper and I will be revealing it tomorrow morning. I don't even want to go there. <laughs> so we're moving further out of Hale, but only by 10 minutes. And my whopper, well, it's absolutely massive. It's got all the right dimensions. I'm incredibly proud of it. Only problem is, it points in the wrong direction. I know that you're going to like the style of this house. Yeah, that's lovely. <laughs> yeah. yeah, lovely big drive and. Yeah, it's lovely. I have noticed one thing now that this is on the north side of the road. Yeah, so this has got the north facing garden. Right. So that's the comfort. You spotted right? the compromise. <laughs> yes. oh, well, actually, <laughs> well, to be fair, there is one other compromise. You know, you said that your budget on a right. really good day with the wind behind you could might just be able to get to 460. Yeah. Right. I saved you 50 quid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you're really throwing them in today, aren't you? Right. <laughs> 459950 is a hefty asking price, but this is a hefty house. 470 square feet bigger than anything else we've been able to show them. It has four large bedrooms and the potential to make a fifth in the loft. What's more, the reception rooms and the kitchen have that wow factor that secretly I think H has been looking for. Check this out. Kitchen oh, diner. <laughs> <laughs> My favourite room, obviously. It's no, an absolute just... belter. Yeah. yeah, it's gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's it. It's got the island. It's now nah, this is great. Mm, maybe your whopper is impressing more than I thought it would. It's lovely. It's nice and big and wide hall, just like yeah. we said we wanted. Good, good. Um, this is the main bedroom in here. One thing I just sort of sow the seed into your minds as a point of comparison. This, at its full asking price, is eighty-six thousand pounds more than house number one, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> which was a, probably a f another four-minute walk away yeah. from Hale. <laughs> so, that's it, what, £20,000 a minute? Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad it's not my decision. <laughs> <laughs> thanks a lot. You just created it. I just created, created the confusion. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> it looks like this house is moving into the lead despite the extra cost, but that garden could still prove to be a problem. He winces as he comes out the back. <laughs> <laughs> um, feels better out here than it looks than from, it, yeah. from in there. Good. Yeah. For what it's worth, I kind of see your style mm. more in the other house, mm. but yeah. greater longevity and yeah. ability to live here yeah. for forever. Yeah. Here. I know. <laughs> you might grow out of the other house. Yeah. You'd never grow out of this, but for your 400 pounds a month, yeah. difference on the mortgage, that's a lot of money. Yeah. It is a lot of money, and I don't want to sort of, you know, to spend the few years when the baby's little, sort of thinking, oh, we can't really afford to do that. But then on, um, the, on the flip side, I don't want to short change myself in the short term, yeah. so it's a dilemma. Yeah. <laughs>
Well, tricky decisions ahead for H and Rick, and I can't tell which house they'll want to look at again tomorrow. An embarrassment of riches on this side of the search, but with Kirsty, well, it's just plain embarrassing, isn't it? Very funny, Phil, but truth be told, it has been a bit grim up north with my first house being rejected for not having the period charm Nina and Graham are after. But I'm about to remedy that with my second property. Four bedrooms packed with period features, even the garden has character, and Phil's arrived just in time for me to wipe the smug grin off his face. You just relax. Is this your favourite? Put your feet up. I don't I don't make favourites, Phil, and nor should you. Have a little bet? No, no bet, thank you. We're in Swinley, a sought-after area of Wigan. It's not an area Nina and Graham have asked for, but that's not actually what worries us about this house. What worries us about this house is that at just shy of £200,000, it's £10,000 more than Nina and Graham's maximum. We're hoping we can bring it in closer to their budget, but we know from the agent that the vendors don't want to move too far on price. Now, wow. oh Nina, my God. somebody told us... <laughs> The kitchen was kind of important. Oh, I love it. Oh, wow. Wow, that's fantastic. Oh, it's amazing. Oh, I love it. It's pretty decent. Look at the size it's of fantastic. it. <laughs> wow. Oh, it's amazing. I'm, I'm speechless. <laughs> yeah, I am. Totally speechless. There is... I don't know whether to call it a stumbling block, but... Uh, there's, of there's course a, there's a stumbling block. It's not going to, you know, it's not going to take a genius to work out what the stumbling block we is going to be. We debated rise. long and hard about whether to show you this house or not, mm -hmm. and, and basically we decided that we couldn't not show it to you, right. even though. And the last thing that we want to do is encourage you to spend more money, but it is mm -hmm. a terrific house, mm -hmm. um, and it's on one hundred and ninety-nine thousand nine hundred fifty. Okay. Right. Okay. <laughs> it's. Yeah, your call. It's not a lot more. Um, it's it's the it's the monthly payments on the mortgage, basically. The difference would be an extra fifty pounds a month, but they've already made sacrifices to get their one hundred and ninety thousand pound budget, and fifty quid a month might be one sacrifice too many. It's a much bigger house than perhaps you were expecting, yeah. Or, yeah. or or a much bigger house than you need right now. So there's no harm in saying, look, this is great. I don't want to stretch myself right now. I'm happy to take a smaller house mm. and go back to your, you know, your one seven five or something like that. Yeah, but I think this this house has just got everything that we're looking for, and it would be a shame to kind of um, yeah. not just push ourselves that little bit extra. Kirsty and I often talk to people about um, the property game and think of moving as a, as a game, your first house and your last house. Mm -hmm. And you want to get from there to there in the least amount of goes possible yeah. because it costs so much to move. Yeah. The person who wins the game of snakes and ladders is the person who rolls the dice fewest times. Yeah. So, master bedroom. Oh, it's absolutely amazing. Oh, it's, it's beautiful. I love the fireplace, absolutely love it. You know, I even, oh, it's just, yeah. it's beautiful. The, oh, look, and I love it. I love it. I could cry. <laughs> it's just, I could. It's just, it's perfect for me anyway, but I'd need to talk to Graham, convince him. Yeah, I don't think there's going to be much talking. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? I don't even want to know how you're going to persuade him. <laughs> don't, don't even want to know. I don't think Graham stands a chance. Nina? I'm here. Oh, there you are. Good size, isn't it? This is the third bedroom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at the look at the view. Okay. So this is the fourth bedroom. It would make a lovely walk-in wardrobe. Yeah. Okay. Walk-in wardrobe. <laughs> in your dreams. <laughs> okay. So this is the master bedroom. Okay. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> That's huge. It's amazing, isn't it? Look at the fireplace. Oh my god. Nina's not the only one feeling playful. Phil has lured me to the bottom of the garden. If you can get a mention of swinging into every show, you'd be happy, <laughs> wouldn't you? That would make you happy. Good. OK, well, the thing is, they want this house. They gave us the list of criteria. This is the only house that it fits the it. list of the criteria. But we have a responsibility to them. Hmm. They're facing a very big decision. And I think throughout that decision, we have to hold on to those tiny little paws of those. You'll be fine. 
At £10,000 over budget, I certainly hope so. This week we're on the outskirts of Manchester with two young couples looking to buy their first family homes. For Nina and Graham, it's about getting out of rental hell. And when I took them to this four-bed in Wigan, they were in heaven. Wow, oh Nina, somebody told us <laughs> that the kitchen was kind of important. But at almost ten grand over budget, I've got to play devil's advocate and show them something to bring them back down to earth. And it doesn't get more earthy than this. Surrounded by a conservation area on the outskirts of Bolton, it's cute as a button. Nina and Graham said they'd love to find something semi-rural, but didn't expect to find it on their budget. They were right. This three-bed is being marketed at just short of 210000 But before you think the country air has messed with our heads, the agent assures us that £190,000 would secure it for a quick sale, which makes this a bit of a bargain. The thing about this house is it's really in very, very good nick. Mm -hmm. um, it's lovely and light. This room is the darkest room and it just needs a repaint with a lighter colour. Yeah. yeah. But everything's done. Yeah. And if you look out the window, you'll see there's a nice little garden, fields at the back, which the council have assured us a green belt and won't be built on. OK. And when you go to the upstairs bedrooms, you just see moors and hills. And oh, lovely. It really has that semi-rural feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Am I flogging a dead horse here? <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> it's not got the wow it's, factor that the other house yeah, has, Yeah, it? it's just not that house, is it? It doesn't have that sort of character and that... But, well, let, but let's but, give it a go. Yeah. It's not, you know. With potentially £10,000 separating the two properties, I certainly hope they'll give this place a chance. So, the garden. Mm -hmm. It is lovely. Um, it's perfect for the setting that we're in. Yeah. Know, the rural garden. You don't think the whole mountain biking, getting onto the moor in five minutes thing is going to swing it for you, Graham? Because this was the house that we thought might do you, you know, cheaper and good access to those type of outdoor activities. Yeah, um, I think if it was on our doorstep, maybe we would take it for granted a bit. Um, so. Oh, for God's sake. God. <laughs> I was going to go with you into the kitchen, but I'm not sure I can actually be bothered. <laughs> Honestly, these two will make any excuse to get back to the Victorian property. There's nothing wrong with this house. Well, nothing a dose of DIY wouldn't fix. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> This isn't good. Have you seen uh, oh. the roof? <laughs> it's like being oh, at work. <laughs> wow, yeah. It's, um, it's a bit 70s, isn't it? So, they're sat on the floor bed in Swinley and they want to see it again in the morning. It's not often we get a reaction to a house like the one the walkers had to this house. The kitchen rendered them speechless, the bedrooms almost made Nina cry, but today Graham's having a sudden change of heart. Let's hope this doesn't end with Nina broken-hearted. Right, so, tell all, how was it? Did you get a sleepless night? Um, obviously we've got quite a lot to think about, so, uh, you know, the money and... Um, the, money. the area and things, we don't really know it very well. Are you worried about it? I mean, it does occur to me, Graham, that it would be quite convenient, given how worried you are about the money, if some other barrier would leap up between you and that house. That's exactly how I feel. Yeah, he's getting, yeah. he's becoming hesitant again. This morning he started to, this is, oh, yeah. is the area right? We don't know the area well enough. And I'm ready to strangle him, to be honest. Yeah, I think this is kind of, sort of coming to terms with the fact that this is how I get when um, something feels some, something's right. really important. It feels, it feels right, but then little things start niggling away. And, how, um, how did you end up getting married? <laughs> did you ask? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. Oh. I know. It's a shock, isn't it? No, I didn't. <laughs> well, he's managed one major decision in his life. Now he's going to have to make another. While he and Nina think things through, on the other side of Manchester, Phil is with H and Rick. We've got two houses in the running, a big four-bed budget buster about ten minutes from Hale's swanky shops and bars and a slightly smaller but sensible house with west-facing garden a little further out. And that's where H and Rick wanted to meet first. Well, we've really been comparing, as said, the hell world that we saw yesterday to, obviously, this our first house. 
you know, and sizing up the distances, the size of the houses, the rooms, and obviously the pluses and negatives, and did some sort of grading between the two properties. And how did the grading system come out? Um, this one scored 10.75, and um, Hill Road scored 12.25. So, um, <laughs> yeah. oh, yes. <laughs> but then that's not taking into account the price, so yeah. Indeed, price is a huge factor here, with the Hale property marketed at £85,000 more than this one. It's a much larger house, but here we have the added benefit of an ensuite. Thank goodness it's not my decision. Hey, you had such a fond reaction to this house the first time. Got feel yeah. coming in the kitchen, lovely, lovely yeah, glass ceiling. It's really nice, but small now. It, feel, yeah. it feels it feels small. <laughs> I think I think yeah, it's the glass ceiling and everything is great, and the setup is yeah. lovely to me. But yeah, it doesn't have that size for myself. It's small in comparison with Hale, right? Yeah. yeah. I think that's what um, you know. Again, why we wanted to come back today because I know that I love this house and it feels really nice. But I was worried that I was going to think it was small, and I think I do. <laughs> yeah. Um, Fortunately, there's room to expand here, and with almost 100 grand at stake, I think it's something we should take a serious look at. Well, the first challenge is to shift this car. <laughs> so he pushes it, I don't yeah. need me. <laughs> He's pushing it himself. <laughs> oh! He's not going to be pleased about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, you don't know your own strength, Pip. Right. Mm. Could be a playroom. Could be a bedroom. I've got a ballpark quote, and this is sight unseen from a builder, to yeah. replace the doors with windows, um, plaster it, waterproof it, sort out the electric. Somewhere between six and seven thousand pounds right. will get you a habitable room. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it'd be a good size playroom. Yeah, and I think that's what it'd be fit for. They don't sound convinced. I'm not sure this house measures up on second inspection. It's really small. <laughs> Everything about the house is really small. Feels very standard three bed semi now. <laughs> you should have got Big Rick to help you with that. Just short of seven foot. So oh. you're not going to be able. F a bed is just over six foot. So you can't spin it round. Right. And you can't use it. So. You can't fit a... Where do you fit a wardrobe? The drawers, it doesn't work. OK. Do we need to look at anything else? No, or? I think... Don't think we need to look at anything else. Just see who's made. <laughs> Hail Road, then? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I get a bloody meal out of that, don't I? Well, the vendor said if they pay the asking price on the house, he'd throw the car in. I think he can keep his car. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're laughing. You're down to one house and it's the budget buster. And things are looking pretty hairy over here too. Graham and Nina loved this four-bedroom Victorian house when they saw it yesterday. The price tag wasn't ideal at 10k over their 190 grand budget. But that's not Graham's problem today. He says he's fretting about the area. But I'm worried it's more than that. Plonk yourselves down. Because we have to have a serious chat. Now, last time we walked into this room, you looked around and you said that phrase, which I very rarely say, hear anyone say, it's, it's perfect, you said. Um, now, it's not perfect. It stretches you financially. It, it is the perfect house, but it's, I'm starting to see those niggly little things as big issues, and I'm not sure why, but... At the end of the day, I mean, a house is a house, isn't it? And a house is a home. A house is a... <laughs> yeah, yeah. And remember, I, mean. I don't want to be in the house anymore. Yeah. No, you're right. Yeah, maybe this is it, then. Maybe. There's still a big maybe, isn't there? No, there isn't a... <laughs> what, just... Not... Give me, give me the, the questions. Ask me the questions. Um, no, no, I... I haven't got any questions. Um, what is it? Is it the area that you don't know the area enough? What is it? 
I think that's kind of that's probably one of the things. Um, I think someone needs a little breathing space. You could go out now and just walk about. Yeah. When Nina and I could talk about what we wanted to do to the house. Yeah. And... No, I'd feel better for for doing that. I think. Do you want to go now? Yeah. Yeah. But I think let him go by himself, maybe. Right. Okay. okay. Just walk around the wander. immediate streets. Go for a wander. Yeah. Oh dear, Swinley is one of the most sought-after areas in Wigan. The schools, the park, all great for a long-term family home. And Nina knows it, but Graham's just not prepared to make the leap. Let's hope his caution isn't catching. On this side of the M62, H and Rick have already ruled out the first house they revisited because of its size, and I'm worried about the garden in the second property. If facing north becomes a deciding factor, there's every chance we could all be going home empty-handed today. So you're nervous? I'm nervous. No, I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's good to be back. It's, it is it is exciting. Yeah. Is it big? Is it small? It's, it's grand, <laughs> it's big. It feels a proper, proper grown-up house. A grown-up house with a grown-up price tag. There's no doubt this could be a wonderful forever family home, but at £460,000, the top of their maximum, maximum budget, they're going to have to be absolutely certain and get over the garden issue. What do you reckon, Rick? It's... Yeah. it's not comparison, isn't it? Now it's just... I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's great, I love it. When we came in yesterday, there was big smiles outside the house, big smiles to start with. And then... <laughs> big smiles when you saw the kitchen, and then it all kind of went a little bit sour when north-facing garden, smaller than you'd hoped. Uh, yeah. Have you got over that? Yeah. Yeah, well, I think the sun does hit the garden. You know, because it's set back from the main house, it doesn't get shaded as much. And we have listened to you, and we do live in Manchester, so the amount yeah. of sun we're going to get, there is parks around for those few days. You know, maybe we're putting too much importance on that, when, in truth, we're going to be in the house a lot more than actually in the garden. It feels good. It's, it's got that size. It's got that wow factor. Yeah, I guess you you're before. both absolutely yeah. beaming yeah. when yeah. you walked in here. That's it, well, yeah. it's just, you know, we could... It's just a lovely house. So, come on. <laughs> Let's go. Find yeah, the house. Easy, easy yeah. to go. <laughs> right, done. So it's full speed ahead in Hale, but on my side of the search, the Wigan Wanderers still roaming the streets and Nina's dreams of a family home are going down the drain. I think he really is feeling the pressure. Mm -hmm. This is obviously agony, but we're never going to get a house. If he continues like this, how are we ever, ever going to buy a house? Well, I don't know what to do. <laughs> Neither do I. And unless the rover returns soon, it's not looking good for this house. Contrary to popular suspicion, i.e. Phil, there are lots of times when I like to be wrong. And I'd like to be wrong about whether Graham buys this house or not. <sighs> I don't think I am, though. Man down, man down. It is never a good sign when someone goes missing in action. Graham Walker's gone to ground. The prospect of paying out £200,000 for bricks and mortar has left him severely shell-shocked. There's only one thing for it. Send in the troops. Are you OK? Yeah, yeah. Just had a quick look around. How are you feeling? All right, yeah. It's not as bad as I sort of thought, you know. You know... Do you, this is the best house we've seen. Yeah, it is. It, it, no, you yeah. know, is no. it just me who thinks that? No, Kirsty and I are right behind you there, Nina. Please just have this house. It's amazing. And, you know... Compare it's... it for the price to other exactly. things we've seen. Exactly, like we saw the that. The space, the character, we saw the, the perfect house. kitchen. Look how big that kitchen but, is. It's huge. Yeah, I know. It's, and it's gorgeous. And we won't need to spend a thing on this house, not one penny. No, I totally get what you're saying, and I think this is... This is the place, isn't it? Yes. OK. Right. Good. Right, so are we going to yes. see if we can get it? Yes. Yeah? OK. OK, cool. Yay. Yeah. Oh, I love a happy ending. Oh, you found each other. Yes. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> we've been doing a lot of thinking and, and we've had a chat and things. Mm -hmm. so. And what's Nina said? Um, Nina loves the place. I love the place as well. Um, I've had a little walk around and it is a, it is a really nice area. So, yeah, so I think we're going to... No, I don't think. I know we're going <laughs> to... Um, if we can get it at the right price. Brilliant. But don't forget, it's above budget. It'll take some serious negotiation. And you're not the only one. H and Rick want the four bed in Hale, but on the market at just shy of £460,000, it's at the very top of what they can stretch to. Well, how, how do you want to play it? The figure which we would like to pay for it is really around the, the 420 mark. I think 420 is ambitious because I really, yeah. I, yeah. you know, I'm thinking you'd be doing well to get it for less than 450. Actually, I think it's worth 450. Let's go on the fancy where we get to. Yeah, good, okay. thank you. Their offer is 40,000 under the asking price. I'm going to have to play this one just right. Um, John, good afternoon. Phil Spencer. I've got an offer for you, uh, and before I give you the figure, I'm going to be entirely 100% open with you. Um, our couple gave us a search budget of 400,000. They said to us at the outset, if something was really perfect, they could borrow some money and stretch it, but it would have to be absolutely perfect. So I've, I've got an offer for you of 420,000, and that's stretching everything that they could do. In Wigan, things are tricky too. Though we're told the vendors won't accept anything less than the full asking price of almost £200,000 for the Victorian property, Nina and Graham's finances are so tight we can't afford not to try and get them a deal. So I'm starting bang on their original budget of £190,000. Amanda. Hi. We've been round the houses with this one because it's really at the top end of my client's budget. They're currently in rented accommodation. They haven't given notice, so they can stay in rented accommodation as long as it's necessary or move as quickly as your client might want them to. The thing is that we just haven't got the asking price, but we, we are in a position to make an offer of, of 190. Hi John, how did you get on? Um, we're some distance apart. Um, yeah, yeah. Thanks for your help. Cheers. Bye. Um, 420 is not going to enable her to do what she needs to do. No big surprise. Mm. Um, but we are down at 450. Right. OK, well, I think I've got to re-look at the numbers, as you said, a couple of days, and touch base, and then obviously see what, what we can do or what we can go back in with. Yeah. And it doesn't look like things are going to be resolved in Wigan tonight, either. Now, they're, they're on holiday, I think. We're really not looking to hear back until tomorrow or Monday at the latest. Oh. So, a yeah. bit more patience. I want you to have that house. I think it's the house for you. Yeah. Yeah. We you are too. a good buyer. You are a good buyer and a good vendor should bite their arm off for a bar like you. Yeah. Oh, good. good. We hope so. But two days turned into two weeks, and sadly, Nina and Graham didn't get the result they were after. We ended up going up to the full asking price, uh, and then the vendors decided that they didn't want to sell the house. Mm. Um, so, obviously, you know, we loved the house, didn't we? Yeah, so, we yeah. absolutely loved it, and yeah. we were gutted, absolutely gutted, weren't we? Yeah. Not to be outdone, they continued their search, and this time were able to be far more focused in their efforts. Having looked at the houses we had with Kirsty, we kind of knew what we wanted then. It kind of cemented the fact that, yes, we want to live in a Victorian house. Yeah. It certainly pays to know what you want, and six months on, Nina and Graham have found a cracking property in Preston. At 189,000, this four-bedroom Victorian semi offers them plenty of room, but it is a big renovation project. Good thing Graham's not only got over his fear of house buying, now he's also happy to roll up his sleeves. I think originally we were never expected to, to take on a project like this, but I think now we're glad that we have.
whether that will be the same in <laughs> a few years' time, I don't know. But um, <laughs> we're excited at this point, so that's great. It's a family home and it's a forever home. And hopefully when we have children, you know, there's space to... To grow into it. Yeah. yeah. While Nina and Graham's thoughts turned to starting a family, H and Rick have already celebrated the arrival of baby Dexter. The main difference since we last Phil and Kirsty in the summer was little Dex coming along here. It's a big, big change to our lives. Great news, but things haven't worked out quite as well for the house we found them in Hale. We did actually up our offer, but we didn't get it, and people said, for fate's reasons. At the time, it wasn't a lot of comfort. <laughs> But our search wasn't in vain. H and Rick realised that Altrincham was definitely the place for them and moved into Rented to keep a closer eye on the market in the area. The move paid off. We walked in this house and um, knew straight away, didn't we? Yeah. Literally. Yeah. Opened the door, um, just a couple of rooms, and we just said, this is it, this is definitely it. At 467,000, this Victorian property is 7,000 pounds above their maximum budget. So a few extra months saving have come in handy. They'll be moving in in four weeks' time, and with five bedrooms and a converted cellar, it certainly provides them plenty of room for a growing family. And as for the garden, this one faces east. After Phil and Kirsty's advice, we realised that the south-facing garden wasn't the be-all or end-all, so we then um, decided to come have a look and we're happy that we did. Yes. It's nice. Yeah. When we moved here, I think one of the questions we were asking ourselves was, would we miss the city life? One, I don't think we have. No. And two, we haven't had a chance to miss it. <laughs> it's just, it's not really every minute we had getting used to being parents, really. So we haven't missed it at all, no. have we? No, no, it's great. No. We're enjoying it. Yeah.